Hi everyone, Brian from Sue Generis Brewing here. It is Saturday, July 1st, 2023, and it's time for a bit of an update on the 50 meter beer project. Today's video is actually sort of a two-parter. The second part's all gonna be about how I set up and run my wild yeast captures, which I'm starting today. So I've never shown that on video in any great level of depth, so I'm putting together almost a mini tutorial on it, and that's the second half of this video. So if that's of interest to you, there will be a time code down in the video description, which will let you jump to that part. But the first part of the video is just our standard update on what's going on with the rest of the 50 meter beer project. And I think the most exciting thing that's happened since the last video is what you see on my right, your left here, which is the bare barley. So we are on day 83 of planting and believe it or not, in that short of a period of time, we've already got this barley starting to ripen. You can see it's gone from green to a nice golden color. They say it's a 90 day crop and it may actually be ready to harvest next Friday, which would be 90 days. I don't know if I believe that this grain could grow that quickly, but it appears that the internet was actually right and that the bear can grow that fast. Here on my left, your right is the Harrington barley. This is the more modern variety. You can see it's not quite as far along. There's a couple of heads that are starting to turn, but most of it is still in sort of the final stages of head growth. So probably in two or three weeks that will finish up and be ready to harvest. The hot plants against the side of the house are doing amazingly well. Of course, the mother plant, which is two years old now, has just taken over. It's a giant weed. It's gone everywhere. I'm trimming it constantly to try and keep it from taking over the whole side of my house. And even with that, you can see this thing's just a giant bush. But on top of that, the two new plants have actually done quite well. They've really sort of exploded in their growth the last couple of weeks. Both of them have made it up to the top of the house. And on all three plants, we're starting to see the beginnings of the hot flowers. So we're gonna get a decent harvest this year unless something goes terribly wrong between now and September. Now, much to my surprise, the stealth hops I planted in the backyard actually are still alive. I had thought they had died a few weeks ago and had kind of been ignoring them ever since. But I was up checking on the pigs the other day and I decided to take the few extra steps into where I put the stealth hops. And it's small, it's scraggly, and it's struggling but it's still there. So even though it's a few months till the hops will be ready, so it's a while before I'm gonna be able to brew, I am starting my yeast captures now because I want a pure strain and I want to have the best opportunity to get that that I can. So by starting early, I should be able to do this one or two more times if I have to. Now, the reason I didn't start earlier than this is it's still just early summer and we're only starting to get good plant growth in the garden and elsewhere on the property. And that is really where we expect to find a lot of our wild yeast. So it was worth waiting until now just to make sure that we had lots of flowering plants, lots of growth, that sort of thing. Now I'm going to do uh, four captures at this point in time. Two of them are going to be what I call an object capture, which means I'm going to uh, pick some herbs from the garden as well as capture some of my bees and try to grow yeast directly from them. The other two are going to just be sort of an outdoor air capture where I'm going to place them outside in the hopes that they will gather from the air some wild yeast. Both of those I'm going to be placing in my garden. One in the barley because that seems like a natural place to hopefully find some yeast for a brewing project. And the other one I'll just place near my tomatoes which are really starting to flower. And so they should have a lot of pollinators coming by and pollinators tend to carry a lot of yeast. So hopefully one of those four captures will give me something good and if not I have plenty of time afterwards to try again. So the way I do yeast captures is fairly straightforward. The goal is to set up some conditions in these little capture vessels that allow me to grow out yeast while suppressing things that I don't want. And things that I don't want would be bacteria, poorly fermenting yeast, so yeast that don't have very good attenuation, or yeast that are oxidative, meaning that they need to use oxygen and are really not capable of fermentation. So to do this is a fairly straightforward process. I am starting with dry malt extract, but you don't have to. You can also use wort from a brew day or whatever else you have on hand. And I'm making up a wort that's around 1040 original gravity. I then add a small amount of lactic acid to each jar to acidify the wort. This will prevent a lot of bacterial growth. And then I'm also adding two high alpha acid hot pellets and then litting these jars and putting them into my pressure cooker. The pressure cooker will sterilize the wort. The lids will of course keep it sterile until I need it. And the pressure cooking will actually extract a lot of alpha acids from these hops. It's amazing how bitter this wort will be after pressure cooking. And that high alpha acid level will suppress the growth of lactobacilli. 
So this should create the conditions which will really only allow yeast to grow because the acidity plus the high uh, alpha acids will suppress most of the bacteria that might otherwise set up shop. But we also want to make sure that we are gathering really well fermenting yeast. And so before I put these jars out, I am going to add 15 milliliters of vodka, so 40% ethanol, which will give me a final alcohol concentration around 2.5%. And of course, as the other yeast ferment that, the alcohol content will increase further and it'll end up somewhere around 65 to 7%, which ensures that whatever yeast I end up with in the end have decent alcohol tolerance and reasonable attenuation. For the object captures, I simply take the herbs or the bees that I've collected and I drop them into the wort and then put on one of these fermentation lids that gives me an airtight seal. And as fermentation starts, the air in the top of the jar will be displaced uh, with the carbon dioxide from fermentation, which will now give me an anaerobic environment. For the outdoor captures, I do things a little bit differently. I start the same way. I open the jars up, put the lids back on and give them a shake to oxygenate. But then I remove the lid and I place onto this a fine mesh. And the whole goal of this is simply to keep larger bugs and rodents and stuff from getting into the jars. I then place these in strategic locations in my garden. So again, in my barley patch and in my tomato patch, and I leave them overnight. And the important thing here is you wanna make sure that whatever night you're leaving these out on, it's not gonna rain or be really windy or something like that because you don't want, of course, rain to fall in and dilute these and you don't want the wind to knock over the jars. The next morning, you bring the jars inside, put the fermentation lids on, and let them go. And, and anywhere from a week to a month, these things should ferment out. And at that point, we can begin sampling them to see if there's any that have yeast in them that we might want to recover. So that's it for today's update. I hope you found the uh, update interesting, and I hope that some of you can make use of my little mini tutorial on how I do yeast captures. And with that, I'll see you in a couple of weeks.